Hey gang, Jane back today with a crochet technique that will help you make joining your colors a little more enjoyable and a little smoother. Today I'm going to share an easy and effective alternative to starting a double crochet round without having that awkward chain three hanging out at the beginning of your round. I often feel when I look at my work with a chain three to start, I kind of hear that song in my head, you know the one, one of these things just doesn't belong. Sometimes it's good to stand out and be different, but when it comes to my crochet, I like to look a little more symmetrical and a little more cohesive. I love to work with a lot of color in my pieces, so I'm always joining new colors. In fact, if you've been following my granny squares, I love to join new colors every single round. When it comes to starting with a double crochet, the standard and most popular method is a chain three. And the purpose for that is to get your starting stitch up to the right level and height of the stitches that are to follow it. I also like to add a lot of chain spaces into my design. So sometimes that chain three can become a chain four or a chain five if my pattern calls for spaces that are in between my double crochets. So the longer the chain, the more noticeable it becomes. This alternative that I'll be showing you today is called a standing double crochet. And it's really simple and it's really satisfying. You may have seen one of my recent tutorials where I created a version of the standing single crochet. The version that I do doesn't have a slip knot like some do. So I start the standing single crochet version just by simply wrapping the yarn around the hook. Well, this standing double crochet works pretty much the same way. So let's get into it and I'll show you how this works. Let's start by looking at the chain three option, which most of you probably already use as it's really the most common. It simply is three chains that act as your first double crochet to bring the yarn up to the height for the double crochet stitches that will follow. But when you look at the overall round, when it's finished, it can stand out or simply throw off your eye by being different than all the other stitches. Now we take a look at the standing double crochet stitch. This one looks just like a regular double crochet and it serves the same purpose of bringing the yarn up to the right height. Then when you look at the full round, it doesn't stand out and it blends right in with the other double crochet stitches. In fact, the only reason I could find it in this picture is because I know where the yarn end is that's stuck behind the piece. When you look at a complete square, your eye can be distracted by these chain three stitches. They're that one stitch that looks a little awkward and stands out from the rest. For me, it takes away from the nice symmetry of the circular work. Part of the magic of crocheting in the round is maybe not being able to see where you started the work and where you ended it. And these standing crochet stitches help with that magic. All right, let's get to the how to of making the standing double crochet stitch. I begin by taking the piece that I want to work into and the yarn that I'm going to use. And I hold it in my fingers so it's ready to use and I place the piece on top. So now I'm kind of holding them together. I'm going to wrap the yarn first. So there's no slip knot in this case either. And I'm wrapping the yarn, but I'm going to wrap it twice around the hook. So I kind of do a dip and dive and wrap it once. And then I go around again and wrap it twice. So I have two wraps on the hook. Still holding this back piece, this cut end with my finger so it doesn't go anywhere because if I let go of it, it'll completely unwrap from the hook. I go into one of the stitches. And I keep this cut end away from my hook. So I'm just tucked it in there with this finger here. So I have the two wraps. It's held in place at the back. Now I wrap the yarn again and pull up a loop, just like a double crochet. But I have this cut end here secured with my finger. So you're not working over this yarn yet. It needs to be loose, but not so loose it gets away from you. So the finger that's holding it in place is key to keeping the tension of the stitch and to keep things moving. Use whichever finger works best for you because you really don't want it to unravel, which it will, and then you'll just have to start all over again. But don't worry, we'll deal with this loose end on our next stitch. Now I wrap the yarn around and go through two, and I wrap the yarn around again, and I go through the last two. That completes my first double crochet, and I still have this cut end. See how it's up by the hook? That's why I don't work over it at this point, but it's up beside my hook and I'm holding on to it still because it could still unwrap my stitch. So what I want to do is work it into my next stitch. And the way I do that with a double crochet is I'm going to go and wrap the yarn around like I normally would for a double crochet, but I'm going to use this as well. So I go under both of them wrap the yarn around. So I have both the working yarn and 
the cut end wrapped around my hook. Then I go into the next stitch and I pull up a loop. I'm still securing this cut end with this finger at the back so it doesn't escape on me. So now I have, theoretically I would have three loops because of a double crochet, but the, this middle loop is actually made up of the cut end and the working yarn. Now I wrap the yarn around and pull through two, and I complete it by wrapping the yarn around, pull through the last two. Now I've worked my yarn into that second double crochet and I have it down here at the base where I want it so that I can just continue to work it in as I work my stitches. And I have my first two double crochets here and they are actual double crochets, no chain stitches. So I would continue to work my double crochets around my circle in whatever way the pattern recalls for. Now when I get back to the end and I'm ready to join, I can just do, I can do a slip stitch or I can do that invisible join and then I put it on my darning needle and I can create the invisible join by going under these two loops and creating just a pretend stitch over top of that first stitch. And then if you take a good look, if you didn't know where that was, it looks just like the rest of them. And now you have a new technique to add to your crochet skills list. You'll find there are times the chain three is a better option, such as in a magic ring or when you're not joining a new color, but there are other options for those as well that we'll do in future tutorials. For now, try using this standard double crochet in place of your next chain three when joining another color. I think you'll find it very satisfying. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel so you're sure to catch all my tutorials as they come out. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you in the next tutorial.